Hello YouTubers, welcome to vlog number 116. It is a Saturday, which means we have less training today, but high intensity. Oh yeah. Let's... Oh, I didn't think it was raining, but it is. Oh no. Let's get down to the club, nice and safe. And we've made it to the club. You may be wondering why I have a Hawaiian shirt on my shoulder. Fraser needed a Hawaiian shirt, so I had to come through for him. And also, so it is approximately an hour earlier than usual down at the club, so we can get some awesome training done before loads of boats come on a Saturday morning on the river and just cause havoc. And since we've got some pieces to do, we don't want havoc caused while we're doing that. Also, my sister is coming down today, so that'll be exciting. Just gonna adjust my hand grip. My sister's coming down. We're trying to do some training here. I'm not sure where, but the Edinburgh University ladies are coming down for Henley Women's this next weekend. So she said she should come down and do a little bit of training as well. Because remember, variation can really help with motivation. And that's what she's thinking of doing. All right, let's get changed. Let's get to getting in that boat and yamming on it. Oh, yeah. Okay, and welcome to Erg Thoughts with Cam Buck. And today it's not just me, and as you can tell from the title, it's a pretty sweet subject. So today we have Francisco Franco Boulogne's Engler Wiltigen Mendes. Or Frank the Tank. And we have William Kenneth Henry Geffen. <laughs> and Vasilis Ragusis. What's your middle name, Vasilis? Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It is. <laughs> and uh, Jack Gosling K. So the boys, as you can tell from the title, we're going to discuss today. So the majority of us here, four of us here, have all been to an American university. And William is here to discuss why he decided not to do that. And so we're going to discuss today why you would want to, or how to get recruited to an American university. So I'm going to go not first, and we're going to start with Frank. Frank, advice for yourself before you went to university on how to get to university in America. 2K. You have to have a recruitable 2K. Probably sub 620 if you want to go to a good school, starting. Also international experience. National team. I raced in the German uh, national championship or stuff like that will definitely get you recruited. Nice, very professional from the Francisco. <laughs> and I would agree with that, I definitely. So if you have massive watts, American unis tend to look at that because when you have big watts, you can't really teach big watts, especially like big, big watts. So one of the things I did before uni was essentially just uh, seven stroke max watts. So if I could get above like 1400, they were like, sweet, you, could, you can come and play. But realistically, if you're talking above a thousand watts or close to a thousand watts as a junior, you're you're quite high above sort of other potential candidates. And that's one easy thing you can sort of say to those American schools because watts, you can't really teach, but you can mold once you get to uni, especially if you're at a hey, uni that, for- that. Mate, I can't get anywhere near <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's experiences can vary. And obviously when you're 120 kilos, it can, you can generate quite a bit of watts. Yeah. But let's go to Vasilis. Your advice for your young self on how to get recruited to American Unit. Yeah, so um, you do have to kind of tick the boxes with the objective measures. That includes a uh, good 2K, um, whether it's, um, you know, some experience on the water as well, international or domestic. Also, I think they kind of look at your <clears throat> potential as a rower. So your height, kind of wingspan, um, you know, all these things will add up to see, you know, can we take this guy on to our program and then kind of push him on and progress him? And will he be like a really good, you know, rower in his last year? So you kind of have to look like how much potential do you have? How have you done domestically within your country and on the international scale? And, um, you know, you have to have some decent academics as well. And, you know, the threshold for student athletes is certainly a little lower than the typical um, student uh, that's going to be applying to the university so you do get some leeway there but you know you have to kind of deliver a whole package so you know a little bit of academics uh, good 2k good d domestic international experience and then also good potential 
I think um Jack God sends key. I think <laughs> maybe um I think looking at the potential is like the biggest thing for the coaches. They're like if you're big, tall, strong, they love that. And if um if you go sub six twenty, they're gonna look at you and they're gonna think, yeah, this guy's got it. But um I think also um <laughs> What are you doing? Bass is just trying to promote himself during our chat. <laughs> um, I think what the coaches also like is like if they either want you to have done a lot of stuff or if you're like relatively new to rowing and you're like really strong, they also love that. So like they're sort of like for me, I, I hadn't really done anything as a junior. I came in and um, I started rowing in my last year of high school. So I think the fact that I like hadn't really done anything and like there was like a lot to develop was also kind of good. So like, don't worry if you haven't been to like junior worlds or whatever and like won all these medals. Obviously that helps, but like you can still go places even if you haven't done stuff. Uh, one thing I remembered, learn how to row pairs. Pairs make eight go quick. If you learn how to row pairs, you're probably gonna do well in school at some point. A little click from Francisco. And going back to Jack's point of sort of the potential of like, if you're not, like it's, it's very applicable to my story. I didn't. I went to America for basketball, then learned to row. So I avoided essentially all junior rowing. I went to national schools, and I, that was the first time I was there a few weeks ago, and it was awesome. But I managed to avoid it until I was 25. So, <laughs> so it really does. It's yes, like Jack's saying, if you do junior rowing and if you do well there, that definitely helps. But if you haven't. Don't worry about it and just get your sort of other areas improved. And Jack was mentioning being big, tall, strong can help, but really it's trying to get the coaches impressed by sort of your numbers, your metrics, whether that is in the classroom, whether that is on the erg. Height can help, weight can help, but if you're faster, if you're say six foot or five nine pulling 615 versus some like 6'10 guy who's pulling 6'20, you're clearly doing a better job. So just because you're not seven foot, 400 kilos pulling a 5'20 doesn't mean you can't get recruited. So we'll, we'll, we'll go to William, who decided to go to Oxford University William. instead of William. Be going to America. What, why, why, what inspired you to stay in the UK? So uh, it's multifaceted really. I'd say uh, to start with, from the rowing perspective, I was a very late bloomer. So unlike someone like Vass, who'd won Henley, pulled some big 2Ks, I, my first ever 2K was a 9.26. Woo! So Let's I, go baby, yeah. let me, let me, let me, hang on it, hang on it, hang it. There weren't many yams and um, that was at 93 kgs. Woo! So it was, uh, that was my first UK, and by the time I uh, what age was that? that was when I was fourteen. So yeah, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. that was that was just now, mate. Talk us through how it went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bad pacing. Um, so I yeah, I was a late bloomer, and so I just didn't really when it, you had to apply quite early, unless you want to take a gap year, you had to apply quite early for the states, and I, I hadn't really pulled the good scores until my last year, um, and I did go to junior world to my last year, but. When, when, the, when the time came to apply and do SATs and all that, I was behind. And so instead, from an academic perspective, which is the other facet, um, Oxford had the course I wanted to do. Um, it, it made sense from, yeah, from that perspective. I, I had done pretty good A-levels and so it, I'd have been offered a place. So that, that just seemed like the right way to go. Plus, I really, really wanted to do the boat race. However, to the people listening to this, I would say actually going to the States first, if you want to do the boat race, is actually a really good idea. Get four years of experience under your belt at a really high level and then turn up for a year or two after. That's a really good way to go. Um, Get and, the option plug in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's all I can really talk about, isn't it? So, um, yeah, no, I mean, I I chatted to the Harvard coach a couple of times and that, that was a possibility, but I would have probably been if I hadn't got my place and was looking second time round. Um, but yeah, certainly, if you want to go to Oxford, a great way to go first is to go to an American uni and uh, yank in it for a few years, develop yourself, develop yourself and then, then stick in an application postgrad like Bass. Yeah. 
Something I want to stress here is that actually Jack and I did our gap years at Leander straight after school and um, I think we were both kind of uncertain where we were going to go with universities, yeah. um, you know, a bit of ambiguity towards, you know, which direction we want to go in yeah. and, you know, we took some time, we went to Leander, rode there, you know, they have great facilities. Um, coincidence that we're again rowing for them now, <laughs> but um, yeah, we kind of took that year to kind of, you know, do some really good SATs and mm -hmm. talk to loads, loads of coaches. Mm -hmm. I think another point that people uh, actually get wrong is that they, they kind of look at the big big three or four schools, you know, Harvard, Washington, and they think everywhere else is uh, not going to be very good. But I, I would op I'd be open to like the top 12 rowing programs at least, you know. Um, there's some really good universities in there, which also have very good rowing, but just aren't in the limelight as much as, uh, aren't in the spotlight as much as kind of like those big programs. So, you know, take a gap here, take some time if you want to, and you know, look at all the programs across the you know the big spectrum of, of uh, American Ray. Yeah, I think going off that um, that gap year really helped me decide a where I wanted to go, but also it gave me the opportunity to speak to loads of coaches because you need a lot of time like to be recruited. Like a lot of people think that being recruited is like easy, like you pull a two k and then like everyone's like, oh, you just go to like Cal or whatever. But no, it's like you have to put in a lot of effort to like talk to coaches, show you're really interested in the school, show you want to go there. And they love that. That's like one of the big things about being recruited is like really show you're engaged with the university and you like go on visits and stuff like that. So yeah, I think that's a big thing. And like Vass and Jack were just saying, so yes, it takes time and some people like really focus on sort of the top few schools. When you start, if you think about America and how big it is, even if you're Maybe you're, I was talking to one of the juniors actually about lightweight rowing and there's many different lightweight schools. Perhaps you look at, there's literally thousands of universities within the US and maybe it's not a Harvard or maybe it's not a Yale or whatever, but you can certainly look at all of other, other schools that might suit you more than you might think. And the only way you're going to find out about those schools if you go on the Google and just search those schools, whether that's you go on the world rankings and then just scroll down and look at one through a hundred, or maybe you do want to just stick to the top 10, top 20. But there are so many schools and so many opportunities in America where you may haven't have heard of them, but like for example, for Northeastern, for me, I had never, I didn't know of them at all, but it's actually one of the, like they have a stupid amount of applicants every year and it's one of the hardest schools to get into in the US, but I didn't know that until I got offered a scholarship, essentially. And as well, so that, that's one of the other points about scholarships and getting recruited. Some schools, like Ivy League schools, their scholarships are systems and are a bit different. So you want to, if you're looking at scholarship, then maybe you look at the schools that's outside of the Ivy League, and or maybe you try and do something a bit different and really sort of yam on it in all aspects. Whether that is the your in academics and your SATs, SATs and ACTs can be very important as well. It used to be that sort of a um, low, sort of like above a 1500 would be okay. And then now like, so for, for Northeastern, it's yeah. like you need a, you need a 2400 to get in. Um, if you're not a student, uh, sorry, if you're not an athlete, uh, you need a perfect, it, yeah. essentially a perfect score. Mm. And then, so that, that was, that was nice now. And um, when I joined, it was a bit less, maybe 22, 21. And so the a SATs, ACTs are really important to really, sort of get right and one one a bit of advice to get on that is you can do that as many times as you like and really it's the AC, the SATs especially is you take it once and you have no idea what you're doing like there's lots of time and breaks and all that you need to like you get marks wrong for writing the wrong answer or stuff like that so it's about a lot of strategy so if you take that two or three times and like Jack and Vass are saying if you're maybe taking a gap year you can take that two or three times and really focus on what you're trying to do and that is one more aspect in which it could help you get recruited to the university of your choice. Anything else from anybody? I heard a British accent works quite well out there. <laughs> I hear this also. <laughs> we can talk about uh, lifestyle and partying in America another time. <laughs> Perhaps next week. <laughs> Perhaps in another no, Erg no, Thoughts. Yeah. But that will be it for Erg Thoughts today. Thank you all the boys for participating in today's Erg Thoughts. And we'll see you after we're all finished this workout. And we've made it into the gym. We've got Vasilius Reguliosis doing some sweet workouts because it's Saturday. And what do you do on a Saturday? But well, work on essentials. 
Saturdays for the boys, baby. Yep. Just for, we're oh. Saturdays for. We're Saturdays for. The arms, mate. No, it's for the arms. <laughs> it's for the boys, baby. Let's go. And we're here in front of, or behind Leander Club, waiting on the handing out of medals after, what is the, what's the, the Peter race? Peter Sutherland, Peter Sutherland, Sutherland, Sutherland race. Memorial Sutherland. Trophy Sutherland. race. Uh, Cup. So the Thames Cup raced Shiplake this morning yes. for the, yes. the <laughs> Cup race. <laughs> and how much did you win by? Uh, one and a half lengths of clear water. One and a half lengths of clear water. Was yes. that a good race? Oh, it was, it was splendid, yeah. It went exactly the way we wanted it to go, yeah. Excellent. Was yes. that a good, good uh, preparation for Henley Royal Regatta? Oh, definitely. I mean, only 600 metres too short. <laughs> yeah. Easy. Easily made up. Nice race prep. All right, we're going to watch these lads get their medals and then we're going to head to breakfast. Because remember, food is fuel. Yes. <laughs> See you there. And that's the lads just getting their medals. Woo, the boys! So lads getting their photo taken back there, but now it's time for breakfast. Let's get to it. And we've made it to the crew room for breakfast after a wonderful medal presentation for the guys at the Thames. And let's check out the breakfast. I've messed it all up, so it's nice and easily edible. Just some eggs, some beans, and some bread. Vass is here having breakfast too. What have we got today, Vass? So guys, had some pieces, um, some beans. Some scrambled egg, some sausage, some toast, some brown sauce, some brown sauce. In um, that's about it for today. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we've had a delicious breakfast, isn't that right, Vass? Oh, so good. So good. So good. Lovely breakfast. There you go. You can you can speak normally. <laughs> and now it's time for a meeting in the library with the boys. That's the end of our full week of our training with the lads. Selection isn't fully completed yet, but it's an exciting time to be alive! We're going to the library, it's going to be lovely. Really excited to go in the library. Lovely little room. I love the library. The li library. It's one of my favourite places to get. Alright, let's get to the library. And we've made it to the library. Is, uh, where's uh, Morgan? Now a sweet chat. And a great meeting in the library with the lads. <laughs> How did it go, Frank? It went very well. Very good meeting. Very good meeting, all right. Now to see what we've got to do for the rest of the day, because I don't know what's happening. And that is us finished for the day. Excellent meeting, excellent breakfast, excellent session. Vast, would you agree? Just excellent everything, yeah, amazing. Everything's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be it for the end of the vlog for today. Hopefully you enjoyed Eric thoughts with the boys. Let us know in the comments below if you did or if you have any other thoughts that you would like discussed. But remember, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button. Have a good one.